Hi there, and welcome to the five steps of leaving a voicemail that gets a response from your prospect. My name is Beck Holland. I'm the head of sales development at Chorus.ai. Before we jump into the content today, I wanted to zero in on the prospect experience and how that relates to voicemails. So I want everyone to put their prospect hat on of when someone is emailing you or cold calling you and when they're cold calling you and leaving a voicemail or not leaving a voicemail, I want you to be very analytical of what your experience and what your feeling is from being prospected into you in that angle. Uh, the number one reason that I hear from SDRs of why they don't want to leave a voicemail is they feel like they're bugging their prospect. So before we take any kind of opinions or stance on what is bugging someone and what is not, I think it's important that we define the difference between spam and persistence. So from my perspective, the difference between spam and persistence is how much you are personalizing. My prospects aren't mad whenever I call them a bunch, whenever I have a really good personalized and tailored reason to call them, and I have something that they did, something that they wrote, something that they said on LinkedIn, and something about them specific that made me think that they want to, they could potentially be a buyer. My prospects do, however, get mad in my experience whenever I'm sending a bunch of emails or sending a bunch of cold calls and making a bunch of cold calls and I don't have any personalization within that reason. So they see it as uh, someone that's spamming them or someone that's being overly aggressive in terms of connecting with them. With connect rates at an all time low, I think the number one thing that we can zero in on to make a difference with our prospect is how we leave voicemails. So today I wanted to talk about how to weaponize those voicemails and how to make them a very integral part of your strategy to get a hold of your prospects with the top five way, the top five steps of how to leave a voicemail to get a response from your prospect. So let's jump into the content. So for the example voicemail today, I wanted to use my good friend in the industry and objection handling hero, Josh Braun. So the first step that I would want to lead with is humility. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but I want to show my prospect who I am in terms of I don't think that everything's perfect about me. So I typically lead with something like this. Hey, Josh, this is Beck calling from Chorus. A uh, reason for my outreach is I'm the annoying rep that has been hammering your inbox and sending you a bunch of different emails to try to get a hold of you. So you want to give a little bit of context on the back end of like, I'm the person that has been sending you a bunch of emails and sending you a bunch of voicemails, but you want to pair that along with a little bit of humility. So it makes a little bit pal more palatable to your prospect that you have been doing that. So you want to, again, hi, Josh, this is Beck calling um, from chorus.ai. Reason for my outreach uh, is I'm the annoying rep that has been sending you a bunch of voicemails and sending you a bunch of emails trying to get a hold of you. You then transition to step number two. Step number two is a comprehensive of two, two different sections. Number one, the personalized reason why you're reaching out. And the second is being prospect centric and really fanning out about your prospect. So if we're calling into uh, the, the right people, usually our companies are hiring us to call into someone who has a lot of experience in their career, someone who has a really uh, ironed out track record. So we need to know what that track record is, number one. And number two, we need to tell our prospect about, about that track record with a little bit of admiration. So um, how it would sound like is this is, Josh, the real reason for my outreach is I was reading your post the other day where you were talking about selling the outcome. One line that really stood out to me is when you said, don't sell bikes, sell the wind in their face. Don't sell braces, sell the smiles that they could have. So that again is going to be prospect centric. If I'm communicating to Josh that I'm really following his posts, he's making an impact of what he's doing in the sales, uh, sales space and sales community. And I'm also giving him a personalized reason of why I thought it would be a good idea for me to reach out. I then transition for the third step into what's called an upfront contract. This is actually a Sandler term where you want to put some rules of engagement to your prospect. So how would it sound like is this? It's more of a barter situation. So, so I would sound like this. How about this? If you call me back and give me 30 seconds of your time to give you my best dog and pony show on who Chorus is and why I thought we might be a good fit for you and your team over at Sales DNA, I promise that I will stop sending you emails and you know, jamming up your voicemail if you're not impressed. So again, you want to give this kind of bartering rules of if you call me back and give me 30 seconds of your time based on this personalized reason, 
then I will stop sending you voicemails. I will stop leaving voicemails and taking up some of your time in terms of prospecting. So it's really, I'm giving him um, that I will go away if he gives me 30 seconds to explain why I thought Chorus might be a fit. I wouldn't go into any value prop. I think it's a little bit too much, but we just want to get the agreement from Josh that he's gonna give me 30 seconds of his time. The fourth step is you want to give them your phone number. <laughs> Don't forget to give them your phone number. So I would say, um, if you give me a call back at you know 214-555-5555, and then you wanna close with humility here, I will give you everything I've got. So again, how that technique is paired together is you wanna give your phone number and you wanna close with a little bit of humility of in that language of, I'll give you everything I've got or I'll give you my dog and pony show. You are showing your prospect that you don't think that you have it necessarily all together and you're really aiming to get some of their time because you respect them so much. So again, that goes, if you give me a call back at 214-555-5555, I'll give you everything I've got. The fifth step is going to be what's called the push-pull, push-pull technique. So within our outreach, it's very, very important whether this comes to email, whether this comes to cold calls, whether this comes to voicemails, that we strike a balance with our prospects. Human beings gravitate towards someone who is balanced. So I asked my friend the other day, I said, when you see someone, an actress like Jennifer Aniston drinking a beer, do you like that? He said, yeah, I think it's a great image. And I said, why do you think you like that? And he said, because Jennifer Aniston isn't, she's really, really fit. She isn't typically someone that you would think of as a beer drinker. You know, it's a little bit too casual for her. So I really like the balance. So within all of our outreach, I think that we, it's important that we communicate to our prospects that we're going to be okay if they don't call us back. We're going to be okay. We know that we have a strong enough value prop um, that we're going to be okay if they simply don't think it's a fit and in the reality that they don't think that we're uh, fit to help them drive more quota attainment. So how the push-pull technique in terms of voicemail would look like is this. We're going to um, zero in on the last pull. So a push would be you're pushing for something. Pull would mean you're pulling back and so you get your prospect to lean in a little bit more. So I do the, deploy this a lot over email, but how I deploy this in a voicemail, what I would I would say Either way, your work's really impactful to me. I hope you're having a great start to the quarter and that you're uh, crushing it this week. You could put in any kind of language that you want. You know, I've, sometimes I've seen people do the non-assumptive close here of like, either way, I hope to, you know, hope to hear from you. you ha I'm such a big fan of your team and I hope you're having a strong start to the quarter. So I think it's uh, very important that we communicate to our prospects that even if they don't wanna buy us, we still really want the best for them. Because then if they do want to buy us, they know that we don't have an agenda. Um, it, we're not, our agenda is not to push more product. Our agenda is to help them as a uh, consumer of that product, uh, even if they don't think it's a fit. So in review, the five steps are lead with humility and give them context, uh, add personalization and be prospect centric in that personalization, give them an upfront contract of what you're willing to do if they give you 30 seconds, give them information and close with humility, end with the push-pull, push-pull technique, and how that would sound like is this. Hi, Josh, the reason for my outreach is I'm the annoying rep that keeps leaving you voicemails and jamming up your email um, with all the messages I'm sending. The real reason for my outreach is I was reading your LinkedIn uh, article the other day where you're talking about selling outcomes. One line that was really striking to me is where you said, don't sell bikes, sell the wind in their face, don't sell braces, sell the smile that they're going to achieve. So I wanted to see if you would give me 30 seconds to give you my best dog and pony show on who Chorus is and why I thought we might be a fit for you and your team over at Sales DNA. If you give me a call back at 214-555-5555, I'll give you everything I got. Either way, your work is so impactful to me. I'm such a big fan of your team and I hope you have a great rest of your day. So thanks everyone for uh, taking a look at the session today and I hope you have a great rest of your day as well.